Greetings! In today's video, I'm gonna be going back to these two palettes. Now, I thought I was done reviewing my Roman Schmal palettes, and I actually am, but after going through these, I had a couple of ideas, and I wanted to customize these a little bit to get them to be even more fun to use. Here's what the palettes look like now. This was originally the Urban Sketching Set. It came with these colors in it, and I've kept most of the colors that were and there, I think I kept them all, but I decided to add a couple. So we have enough space in the middle to put some more pans sideways. So what I did is I moved some of the half pans that were in the tray and moved them up there. I added two full pans that I already had, and I also added a half pan from the other set into this one. So basically I added the mineral violet here, this color. And this is Cherry Quinacridone, I think, and this is Shadow Violet. I'm going to be re-swatching these so I have a card to include with the set and so that you can see the colors. So that's for this one. For this one, well, now it has one less colors and I can fit about six in the middle. So what I did is I ended up getting a few extras and this was super exciting to get because this is the first time I get to try Roman Schmal's half pan, like open stock. And I'm so glad that they added half pans to their range. This is super convenient. So the colors I got. Now, I wanted a magenta to include with this set. Don't forget, this one is no longer in there. So I was like, oh, I feel like a magenta would be really nice with this set. And then I was like, okay, so I have my yellow, I have magenta, and I don't really have a cyan color in there. We have a phthalo blue, but it's the red shade one, and it doesn't work quite as well. So I got phthalo blue green shade, which is a color that looks very in intensely blue at mass tone, but usually when diluted a bit, you can work with it as if it was a cyan color. And then I got one of my favorite kind of colors to use, a teal color. This is a color that's impossible to mix. You cannot get this color from mixing. And I always love these colors. They're often cobalt pigment. This one is cobalt sea blue, and they have this amazing granulation that you can get into mixes, and it makes for something really breathtaking. That was the first three colors that I picked up to add to this set. Then I was like, okay, a color that I personally really like in general, not necessarily just for painting, is a good orange warm yellow. And this is Iso Indolinone Yellow Deep. And I really wanted to add this color in there because that's the kind of color that I like to use in paintings. And I always end up having to mix it. And, you know, I paint a lot of orange cats. So this is an excellent base color for orange cats. Like you can start with that mix it and get there really really quickly and consistently. So that was for extra colors and I have room for about six so I was like okay I can bring in two other colors and of course I got three pans of course. <laughs> I got this one this is deep green gold it's a beautiful kind of yellow green slightly muted color very transparent also very very useful for the kind of scenes that I like to paint since I paint a lot of forest and nature and that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, this is a color that's not exactly in this selection, so I might be able to do something good with it. And then I was a bit split. The last two colors that I got are regular sap green and this beautiful, amazing autumn green. When I saw that this one was available in half pans, I was like, oh, yes, 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 I want this. I gotta find a way to get this in the set. So now I'm a bit split though, because I have all of these greens, <laughs> like these two that are originally in the set, and now these three extras, and technically one of these has got to go. So that will be the difficult part. I'm gonna clean up my palette a tiny, a tiny bit, especially the tray, so I can fit the colors in there and perhaps reorganize stuff around. And I might not keep the phthalo blue red shade in this set, but I'll see. But anyway, that's what I'm kind of working with. So I have 18 colors and <laughs> one tin, and they don't really fit like in the middle in the other way. So I'll figure it out. But for now, this is what I'm starting with. I'll unwrap the stuff, I'll label these, and we will be able to get back to these palettes when I've swatched them. Something extra that I wanted to mention, you know how the full pen from Roman Schmal have a brush stroke of actual paint on the label? Well, these don't come with a similar label, but they still found a way to include a beautiful swatch of the actual paint in there. This is kind of a, a little window insert, and you have in the back a piece of paper painted with the color, and I think this is amazing. And also, wow, the amount of work that goes into wrapping these. As someone who's made paints 
on an artisan craft level. Packaging the pans was always the most time consuming part of the whole process because you really have to like make sure everything is good with each pan, wrap it up, have the you know the nice wrapper around paint all the wrappers print them like there's a lot of work that goes into packaging a pan and i mean it was already impressive that their full pans had the swatch you know the the brush stroke on them like you can see this is an actual brush stroke of actual paint so someone has to go one by one and paint these on the wrappers the pans and now even with the half pans, they found a way to include a beautiful piece of the swatch color so that you really know what you're getting. And as far as I can tell, of all the commercial brands I've tried, they are the only one doing this. So I thought it was worth a special mention because this is quite cool. I am setting up these half pans to put in a palette and I wanted to show you how cool the packaging is. So you have here in the back, it's kind of hard to see. But it's, I don't think this one is the best example. Let's see. Okay, so this one, this one is perhaps a better example. You can see that the, there's a perforation like along the edges of the pan's bottom. And you can technically just push out the pan and this numbered label is going to stick to the bottom. So you'll be able to identify your paint. Also, this is a sticker. So it's a bit hard to see. I'll... I've had some luck carefully wedging a blade in there, so you can see. And the swatch is an actual piece of watercolor paper sandwiched between the wrapper and the sticker. So what I've been doing is opening up the packages this way, taking out the, the plastic, and then I kind of cut the number label just a bit smaller so I can have it on the side rather than at the bottom because I want to put some magnets at the bottom. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And I'm back with my completed modified Roman Schmal palette. Now, quite a few things have happened since the last part that I filmed. You saw me talk about each of these half pan set. So the travel set the urban sketching set, and then I've shown you some extra pans that I got to round up this set. And then I started thinking and I was like, oh, if these sets have a few colors in common, like the sub green light, the Aquarius green, the Cypress burnt umber deep, and I had my new colors and I was sort of thinking about this stuff and I was like, you know what, if I remove the Venetian Yellow Earth and the Burnt Sienna Monte Amiata, which are, you know, kind of a perhaps my least favorite of the bunch, especially because in the other set you have a Gold Ochre and an Italian Burnt Sienna that I much preferred the performance. These two here are really pretty, but they're also a bit weaker in terms of pigment strength, which is something perfectly normal that happens with these pigments, depending on the variant. Long story short, I removed these two and with all the extra colors and by combining this set, I came up with a single tin of 24 colors of Roman Ball half pans. All right, now let's take a look at the tin itself. I've used this beautiful tin by Schmincke that I had that wasn't used at the moment. So this is the color layout in this particular one. I made sure every single pan was properly labeled and I put it in there. And if I ever need to reconstitute any of the previous sets, I can just go back to that. These are the 24 colors in this set. So what I end up with is a palette that has two yellows that are admittedly quite similar. A yellow orange, then a red, a cooler red, a magenta, a purple, a lot of blues. I kept the two ultramarine because they're significantly different. The French ultramarine is a bit more granulation to it and it's a bit more intense and warm which is kind of funny because the ultramarine intense to me appears a bit less intense <laughs> but is also much smoother and then i had the phthalo blue red shade phthalo blue green shade the blue sky cobalt sea blue so that's a, a good selection of blues i consider the phthalo blue green shade possibly the blue sky as a cyan color depending on your needs. 
So I still have my preferred versatile triad of colors in there with one of the yellows, the magenta, and phthalo blue or possibly blue sky. Then the cobalt teal, which I really, really like as a color, not only for its hue, but also for its granulation. And when you add it in mixes, it always comes out as something really beautiful and interesting. Then I added the deep green gold. The sap green light came from the two sets. I added a regular sap green because I quite like this hue. It's borderline on being just a bit unnatural in a way, but at the same time, it's really beautiful and it's really easy to tone down either by diluting it or by mixing it with any other color. Then the autumn green, which is a beautiful color with very interesting separation and granulation. The Aquarius green that was from the original sets. And then I kept buff titanium, gold ochre, Italian burnt sienna, one of the cypress burnt umber deep, capricornum, and shadow gray. I wanted to give myself a chance to play with these colors together, so that's why I also added this little painting here and also this page here. For this page of illustration, the approach is, is more focused on, you know, details and kind of a, a tighter application of color, while for this little painting, it's a bit more loose and it's a bit more of mixing on the paper and adding a bunch of layers and, and all that. I wanted to also add that there is one color that is not in the set that I used on this page, and it's Titanium White from Roman Schmal. I like to use it for small details, small highlights, like on the on the jar here or in the eyes and that kind of stuff. Just a bit on leaves, a bit everywhere actually. And it's something that I like to do with more detailed illustrations. So I like to keep my white watercolor in a separate container just in case I want to add a bit of it to any painting. Aside from that white, all the colors in the paintings here are the colors of this palette. All in all, I think this color selection is very easy to work with, at least for me. I was really able to put together colors that I love, and the colors from the previous 12 color sets were already good selections, and all I had to do was to add a few colors in there that were personal favorites. And ultimately, my personal favorites will not be the same as someone else's. So that gives you room for a customization or a personalization of the palette where you have all the basics there and you can add in your favorite colors, which I think worked out really well. So I finally reached the final stage of this palette, its final iteration. I would love to know what you think of my final color selection and the idea of putting them all together in the end rather than having two sets of, you know, 17 colors or something in smaller tins. I hope you enjoyed this video and found something new in it, and we will see each other in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.